Hey, it's Kelly. Welcome back to my channel where we talk all about gentle skincare, sometimes self-care, and today we're talking spring skincare swaps. Every season, I definitely have to take a look at my skincare routine and make some smart decisions and maybe some smart swaps with my core skincare products. And spring is no exception to that. I mean, my skin type really does fluctuate with the seasons. It is, you know, combination. It's sensitive and prone to dehydration, but in the cold winter, it can definitely lean way more dry and in the hot humid summers it can get a lot more oily and in these bumper seasons like spring yeah it's real tricky when you're trying to um, balance right between moisture but not too much moisture not as much as winter and hydration and lightness but not too light that your skin gets dehydrated right you really have to uh, figure out that perfect mix and so today's video is really uh, just me sharing with you some of the products that I've been using recently for the colder temperatures um, that I am smartly swapping out with more spring appropriate skincare. It's very relaxed. It's going to be really chatty. We're going to have a great time. I have some more spring skincare content coming up for you, including a spring serums focused video in the next couple of weeks. So definitely stay tuned because like I said, it can be kind of challenging, but if we make some smart swaps, we can make this season effortless for our skincare goals. If you're so ready to jump in, give the video a big thumbs up and let's get into these spring spring skincare swaps. So let's talk about milky moisturizing toners because you know I love them. And really I love them in all seasons, but there are certain ones that I love for winter time and certain ones I prefer outside of winter time. It's really about balancing the nourishment and the moisture. And kind of like I was saying at the beginning of the video, it's really about finding that balance for me and my personal skin. And please know this whole video is just me talking about my personal skin. Um, everybody has different experiences with these products. And um, I hear you and I honor that, right? This is just one of many voices in the skincare community. Um, but let's talk about Laneige Cream Skin Refiner um, because this product has been a cold weather staple for me for many, many years. Definitely a winter favorite. Very nourishing, creamy, moisturizing, yet watery at the same time. Um, it really is a great way to kind of kick off a um, very cold weather, dry skin kind of focused routine. However, when the temperature starts to warm, up. I just find that's just not the right fit for my skin. Um, I'm really not struggling with as much dryness. Um, I'm really trying to combat more oiliness um, by the time this middle spring um, is here, right? And so it's just not, it just feels kind of thick on my skin at this point in time. Now, I want to let you know that there's actually two versions out there kind of right now. We're in this awkward moment with cream skin because the original formula has been discontinued, I believe. Um, and now they're really replacing that with the serapeptide formula. And I do have a video talking all about this. So please check that out if you are kind of confused on what I'm talking about right now, if you're interested to learn more. Um, there's two formulas out there, but quite honestly, I kind of want to take a step away from those purely moisturizing, creamy types of toners. Another one that I like in cold weather that I'm not going to be using in the warmer weather is the Essentry Yam Root Toner. Um, very nourishing, very moisturizing, very oil-based, very much not appropriate for my skin right now. So my smart spring skincare swap is the Dr. Seracle Vegan Kombucha Tea Essence. Yeah. Yeah, it's back. You know, I absolutely love this. Um, this is another staple for me, right? And I have used it in cold weather with great success, but there's just a little bit more of a, a balance to this product, a little bit more lightness to this that seems to suit my skin outside of the winter months very, very well and much better than the cream skin products. And so what I love about this is I can see the balance in the bottle. <laughs> you see that there's the hydrating portion and that actually is the kombucha, the, the fermented tea part of it. And then and the silky creamy part is actually a sunflower based uh, moisturizing creamy layer. And so the fun about this essence is that you get to mix it up and those layers combine beautifully together to create this um, very watery, hydrating essence toner type of product with a silky slip, with a moisturizing creaminess to it, a lighter nourishment to it. Um, and it just feels so good. Combination skin really needs products like this. It really needs all 
that hydration and that moisture. It needs the balance and it, it really does walk that fine line for my personal skin and it feels amazing. And I have to say this formula, while uh, Cream Skin does actually contain some tea content in it, um, I actually find the um, kombucha essence to really bring out a little bit more of the tea benefits personally for me. And it really does seem to reduce redness um, and signs of inflammation, which definitely on my skin can be redness and just kind of like a dull or an evenness to my skin. It can also result in my skin feeling just a little bit more irritated, a little bit more sensitive. And my skin gets easily inflamed in the spring because of allergy season. I'm just so sensitive to that. And it really wreaks havoc on all different parts of my body, right? And I've noticed that it does kind of make my skin feel just a little bit more delicate, a little bit more sensitive. And oftentimes I can see more redness on my skin too. And so I find that this formula with the tea does have that that anti-redness or that soothing effect on my skin. It just feels so good. So I've been really obsessed with the Peach and the Lily Rescue Party Barrier Serum. You've been seeing me use this quite a bit. Um, I absolutely adore it. It's this really lovely, um, it's actually a light creamy type of texture. There's a lot of hydration to this, um, but a really good content for ceramides, cholesterol, fatty acids. There's some ecto in, in here, which I've been really obsessed with this ingredient. Um, did a whole video about it, definitely check it out. Um, but this is a really strong antioxidant that kind of goes the extra mile. It doesn't just protect your skin from free radicals. It actually shields your skin from pollution. Um, it actually is a um, great ingredient if you do suffer with dehydration because it has this ability to really help your skin retain hydration for the long term. Um, so it really aids a, a hydrating formula or a barrier supportive formula. It can do a lot. And so this um, serum has been so helpful for me. I've been really enjoying it, especially in the very late winter and early spring spring, it has really gotten me through um, that period of time really beautifully because it is, as you notice, it's creamy, but it's not, you can tell it's not really, really rich. It's not really, really overly nourishing or thick or greasy. It feels really great on the skin. And quite honestly, I could continue to use this into the, the deep spring and even the summer months. I, I think I, I personally could. However, my bottle is just about to be empty. Um, it has served me so well, and I am going to be doing a smart swap here with the Bring Green Sarah Healer Serum. Now this is actually a um, really similar point of view to Peach and Lily. This has um, ceramide content. It is definitely barrier focused with ecto in as well. However, they have created it in more of like a gel uh, like serum that feels very hydrating on the skin and a little bit plumping as well. And so I'm getting all the same benefits. It's kind of functioning the same way for me but just kind of lightening up that texture just a little bit. And for me, a lot of my swaps are about just lightening it up just a little bit. And, you know, just quickly to highlight the ecto in again, it actually is such an amazing ingredient for um, environmental aggressors, as I mentioned, pollution, but also when there's allergens in the air, ecto in is such a protective antioxidant for those types of situations. And so, as I already have mentioned, the this is a very high allergy season for me and it does affect my skin as well as my sinuses right and so um, I like to build in those types of antioxidants into my routine especially during these times of year because it really helps to shield my skin and cut down on those episodes of like hypersensitivity itchiness irritation and redness so you know I love a good wash off mask. I definitely do perform wash off masks a few times a week and I do cycle through a few different ones, but I do find that there's often core ones that I will go back to week after week. And one of them, especially in the winter time, is the Bioderma Sensibio wash off mask. Now this is such an intensely soothing wash off mask. I grab this whenever my skin is irritated, no matter the season. I just happen to find that when my skin gets really dry or when it has been exposed to the hard elements, I'm definitely going to need a mask like this to help my skin um, bounce back and not feel so inflamed and irritated and dry. And that's exactly what this mask does. It 
has this um, really generic creamy texture. I mean that in the best way. It's, it's quite generic. It's not super rich or buttery or silky. There's a nice moisture to this, but it has more of a cold cream kind of a texture to it than anything else. And I actually kind of love that, especially in the winter when my skin is feeling really dry. Um, it just feels very, very soothing. And this, you know, as this sits on your skin, this formula really, I believe, is, is designed to kind of melt into your skin and really absorb. Your skin just drinks it up actually. Um, and it leaves this really nourishing, comforting layer on your skin. And when your skin is irritated because it's dry, having that layer after you wash your, your mask off and having a layer of moisture left on your skin feels amazing. It's so protective. It's so healing. There is an anti-inflammation ingredient in here that's derived from licorice root extract. And you may know that licorice root is incredibly healing, soothing, uh, reduces redness, swelling, inflammation, um, sensitivity, itchiness, irritation, right? It is an amazing, soothing, healing ingredient, especially good for sensitive skin. And so that is the magic at play here. Um, it seems very simple on the surface. It seems seems very generic, but once it's on and you need that healing, it's awesome. And like I said, when my skin is irritated, I don't care what the season is. I use this because it works, but it gets more heavy usage in the winter. So I still have the Bioderma. I'll still be reaching for it when necessary, but my weekly rotation of masks, I'm going to be favoring the Carez Super Dose Probiotics Mask. This is definitely a mask that is focused on healthy skin, repairing the skin, strengthening the skin, but there's also some other additional things about this mask that really help your skin um, bounce back, um, to really help your skin glow, to really refresh your skin, to kind of press reset a little bit in the best way possible. You know, in the springtime, definitely I always have that concern about keeping um, the sensitivity and the inflammation down. And this mask does help. You know, there's a lot of probiotics obviously in here that really help to um, maintain your skin's a microbiome, which is actually your skin's first defense and works in tandem with your moisture barrier to help keep your skin strong and to defend it against all those aggressors, which we've already talked about, right? Allergens and pollution and all of that, right? So the probiotics in here are very helpful for that, but there's also just a kiss of lactic acid in here. And I feel like that really does give you that little bit of a reset, that little bit of a refresh. And my skin can lean a little bit more congested congestion prone, a little bit more dry in the spring. Like I said, my skin type's kind of changing and that can just do all kinds of weird stuff funky stuff to your skin. And so that little kiss of lactic acid, it's actually barrier supportive. It's a hydrating ingredient for your skin, but it also gently just helps to um, get some of those excessive dead skin cells off of your skin. So when you wash this mask off, your skin actually looks a lot um, brighter, a lot healthier. It feels smoother and it's more glowy. This is not really an exfoliating mask, but it just seems to have that little bit of an effect and lactic acid can definitely do that for your skin. It has this creamy yogurt based texture. Corez is a Greek um, brand. I actually I started using Corez products when I was uh, traveling through Greece a few years ago. Um, and this is one of the products that I keep in my routine since that vacation because I love it so much. It rescued my skin in the middle of the Greek summer um, and it continues to rescue my skin, giving it that kiss of glow and that kiss of health, really um, just making it feel really soft, refreshed, but also strong, healthy. And that little bit of yogurt moisture is a lot lighter than Bioderma and it's perfect for this season. Now this next product is a bonus because it's not a swap, it's actually an addition. I just wanna quickly mention that I've added into my masking routine for the springtime, the Dr. Idris Major Fade Flash Mask. Now this is an AHA based mask. They're using glycolic acid, lactic acid, and then they're using tranexamic acid, which is not an exfoliating acid and it's not an AHA, but it's actually a brightening ingredient. And this is, as the name suggests, it's about majorly fading hyperpigmentation on your skin and that's you know that's always kind of something that I'm working on constantly and um, it's a really good time right now before the UV gets too intense in the, like the high summer days it's a good time for me now to use a photosensitizing ingredient like AHA to help work on some of the unevenness in my skin and some of the you know the sun damage that I'm constantly I'm trying to work on right um, and so I've been really impressed with the major fade line um, from this 
brand. And so I've been actually using the mask for a while now, but I've really gotten into a good routine. I um, have really had to make room in my routine. I actually dropped one of my tretinoin nights in favor of using this product because I really have um, serious brightening goals, right? Um, and so I'm making room for this right now. So let's talk moisturizer because I think this is probably the number one product that we all are swapping when it comes to temperature changes, seasonal changes, right? Um, I definitely do find that I um, need to, to keep my eye on that moisturizer. Um, and my skin loves moisture. If you haven't really picked up on that, if you've watched a few of my videos or you've been here for a really long time, my skin just drinks it up but there is still a fine line for me. And so sometimes I will use heavier creams even into the later spring, um, but oftentimes I like to have something lighter on hand, especially in morning um, times, and especially when I know that the temperature is gonna be a little bit warmer, I'm gonna go for a little bit of a lighter moisturizer. If I know I'm gonna be doing a workout later in the day and sweating through my moisturizer, um, I will often choose something lighter um, in that type of instance as well because those heavier creams work pretty much all the time for me in winter, but it starts to get like a balancing act, you know, as the temperatures go up. So I'll probably still be keeping the Iliune a Ceramide Ado Concentrate Cream on hand as uh, definitely a night cream, sometimes a morning cream too, but I like to have some options on hand when I want those lighter mornings. And so um, I've really been liking the Toradin Solid In Cream. It really offers a lot of what I like, a ceramides, cholesterol, fatty acids, barrier support, panthenol, um, and it's silky, it's moisturizing, but it's lighter than Iliune. You know, it's just a little bit more breathable than Iliune in comparison, right? And so it's just that, that enough of a step down in moisture where my skin is still going to feel balanced and comfortable, um, but not overwhelmed. And so a really great morning type of moisturizer for me personally, something that works really well under makeup, plays well with sunscreen. Um, I can sweat with this and I'm not too worried about congestion. So definitely um, a winner there, something I'm going to keep really close to my sink for my morning routines. I've also been really into the Marion May ID Benoan and Blackberry Cream um, recently. Um, and so that might be something too that I play around with, especially because you know, I love that antioxidant content in the morning and ID Benone is a great antioxidant. So that's another one that has kind of a similar appeal. Um, it, it really does balance out for me personally, the rich moisture, the hydration element, but it's just a little bit thinner um, and, and not as weighty on the skin as Iliune. And so again, something that I will choose for a morning, but still spring nights, I still need a nice, good moisturizing, protective nourishing cream. Iliune does the job beautifully. Now let's talk sunscreen because this is a really important area for me to kind of address and revisit come springtime. I do live in the upper Midwest here in the United States. Um, it can get very dark uh, in winter time. It's always overcast. We rarely see the sun here uh, during the winter. Um, it's kind of bleak quite honestly, it's a little bit depressing, um, but it's very dark and the days are very short. And so come springtime, um, we start to see the UV index go up in the springtime where it's like hovering around one in the winter. We start to see three, four, five, six uh, UV days, right? Uh, the UV index is what I'm referring to during the spring. And so I for sure am like, you know, sunscreen every day, 365 days a year, right? I don't give up on my sunscreen in the winter, but I'm going to be honest with you, I do get a lot more relaxed about sunscreen in the winter. I don't reapply. There's no point um, because the days are so short. Um, there's not that much sunlight that you would really need to reapply necessarily. Um, th these are the times where I'm testing out more like SPF 30 and 25 types of products too. I just don't need as much protection and I don't need to be as diligent. You just don't. You can be more relaxed. Now come spring, like I said, the UV index starts to go up and I need to revisit that and I need to kind of get myself back into the habit of reapplying, being a little bit more diligent, looking at the products that I'm using and making sure that they are adequately protecting me for the sunnier days that are ahead. And so that balanced out with, again, textures and moisture, right, for my specific skin, which is feeling a lot more oily, a little bit imbalanced in the oil if I, I may say like I feel like my t-zone is super oily lately and so my creamier more moisturizing sunscreens that I favor in the winter just 
don't feel great right now. They just feel like they sit on top of my skin. So I am definitely switching out my um, By Wish Trend uh, UV sunscreen that I recently just um, told you I've been loving in March. I absolutely have, but it's about time for me to um, empty that and kind of put it to the side in favor of some lighter formulas. So Skin 1004 Hyalucica, it never really went away, but it's getting a lot more use now. Um, much lighter, um, essence -y type of sunscreen. It just feels so good, so lightweight. It doesn't feel like my T-zone is super duper greasy when I use this. I have also recently been into the Numbuzin number one sunscreen. I just did a review on it, so please check that out as well. Really similar here, very light gel uh, type of a texture, really weightless on the skin. Uh, very appropriate for oily folks who maybe do suffer with dehydration. The reason that I say that is because it's so lightweight, it's not interfering and like adding to a shininess or an oiliness or greasiness on the skin. Um, it doesn't weigh you down, but it doesn't dry you out either. And I feel like some oily skin focused sunscreens have silica in it. They have other ingredients that help to control sebum that actually end up dehydrating you and drying you out, right? So this actually works perfectly um, with oil, but it doesn't like dry your skin out. So these are more of my casual everyday sunscreens that I'm going to be uh, working into my routine as I'm emptying other stuff, kind of shifting things out, making those swaps. However, as I mentioned, the UV is starting to go up. We're starting to spend more time outside. The sun is hanging around a lot longer. And so for some more specific activities, I am going to bring out the big guns um, that have been kind of dormant for the winter months um, when I'm going to be outside for a really long time. So I'm talking about, um, you know, maybe sitting outside. What's going to happen soon? Patio season is, ha is happening soon, right? Sitting outside, maybe at a restaurant. Um, if I'm going to be maybe doing a much longer walk, with my dog or maybe doing a hike or something like that gardening lawn care those types of situations if you're going to be sweating when you're outside and exposed to the sun i am definitely looking for something with sweat resistance you know rated for water right and i'm also going to be looking for something that has probably a better uva protection and so um, i'm bringing back into my routine for those specific situations really the um avene or the aven a uh, very high protection um, fluids so there's a fragrance free version that i really like um it's so comfortable on my skin it is a thicker sunscreen there's uh, quite a bit of shine to this but it's as the name suggests it's very protective very protective and it also um, has a water resistance uh, a water resistant rating um, it has really good UVA protection um, it's kind of trendy to say that it protects from blue light but it protects from blue light and it's definitely something that I choose for the most sun exposure so I'm curious if you're making any spring skincare swaps right now or maybe you're on the other side of the equator and you're making some fall swaps let me know either way in the comments below and if you love this video and you want to see more from me i would love it if you would hit subscribe if you haven't already come join our community i do release a lot of new videos full videos and shorts all about skincare throughout the week so don't forget to turn on notifications so you're never out of the loop thanks for being here with me today i love you so so much i really do hope that you are healthy happy and safe and i'll talk to you in the next video bye